there's a lot of bad advice out there as far as what you actually have to do to get rich. I hear stuff like sleep only six hours a night or invest in Bitcoin or study like crazy or you need 17 streams of income. Look, some of this advice might be true and some of it might not be true. But even if you do all the right things, there are five habits that are going to keep you from reaching your financial goals. These five things will sabotage your success even if you have everything else in place. I'm pretty sure you're going to dislike me after I tell you what I'm about to tell you, but I'm gonna tell you anyway because probably no one else is gonna give you the advice that I'm gonna say in this video. And I can guarantee that if you stick around to the end of this video, you're gonna hear things, a fresh perspective that maybe it's not even all that nice. I can tell you for a fact that if you can quit these five habits that I'm about to tell you, it can change your financial future. Now, the first habit that you need to quit in order to get rich is probably best illustrated in a story from the life of Jim Carrey. Now you probably know him as a successful actor and comedian these days, but did you know that he said that his father was one of the funniest guys that he had ever met? And that his father probably could have been just as successful as he did. But instead his father, instead of pushing out of his comfort zone, chose a safe job as an accountant instead. And he never pursued a career in comedy or used any of his gifts in that way. The ironic thing is his father actually lost that safe job and they ended up in extreme poverty and the whole family had to work as janitors in a school just to make ends meet. After that, Jim Carrey still tried to launch his career as a comedian, but his first efforts were met with failure, including being booed off stage during his first performance. But he kept pushing through and did not give up until he hit success. And even after he experienced success in comedy roles, he still continued to push himself out of his comfort zone into more serious roles. And you can see in his career him pushing himself out of his comfort zone and expanding and growing again and again. Now I want you to imagine if he would have stayed a janitor just like his dad was and never pushed out of his comfort zone and never pushed past his fears. And this brings us to the first habit that you need to quit in order to get rich is getting out of your comfort zone. In fact, Jim Carrey has a famous quote where he said, fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. In other words, you can't avoid having to face things that you're afraid of, but you get to decide whether those fears are gonna control you, you get to decide whether those fears are going to keep you stuck in your comfort zone or not. And I've observed this in every millionaire that I've ever come across. In fact, even the billionaires like Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Warren Buffett, they all reached these heights because they stepped out of their comfort zones. Many failures in life are caused by us not pushing out of our daily routine. I know it's understandable and we prefer to stick to things that feel familiar and safe, but a lot of times these are the things that are getting us on a bad road that's gonna keep us from ever reaching our financial goals. There's another famous quote about comfort zones that goes like this. Everything that you want is on the other side of fear. There might actually be a step that you're avoiding taking right now because it feels uncomfortable. On the other side of that step could be your financial transformation. And after this video is over, I want to encourage you don't do anything else until you take that step. Now let's get to the second habit that you have to quit if you ever want to get rich. And I want to start by asking you a question. I want you to think about the last weekend that you spent partying, going from bar to bar or club to club. How much did you spend? How much energy and time did you spend getting ready for that? partying weekend and then how much time did you spend recovering from it and this brings us to one of the major habits that i believe everyone needs to really get a handle on if they ever want to get rich and that is limiting alcohol consumption now before you click away i'm not talking about having a drink or a beer here and there with a meal i'm talking about how much money you spend and waste just buying drinks at clubs and bars you can easily blow 40, 50, 100, even $150 in one night. Not only have you spent all that money, but you wake up the next morning lacking the clarity and focus that you need to move yourself forward in your goals. We all know of people that would have been much more successful if it hadn't been for their alcohol problem. Celebrities like Whitney Houston, 
even the iconic Elvis Presley. These people ruined their careers and even lost their lives due to excessive alcohol consumption. Think about Mel Gibson. His entire film career was seriously negatively impacted by statements and actions that he made while intoxicated, including even getting a DUI, and it was all public. And he only recently has made a partial recovery in his film career from that setback. Now let's hit number three. Now this is what I'm talking about because the majority of my audience here is male, so I'm talking directly to you guys. There's a particular activity that you spend a lot of time and money on that is gonna kill your pursuit of financial success. Some statistics show that men spend an average of 90 minutes per day on this and even more on weekends. And I know what you're thinking. I'm not talking about wasting your life on some seedy back corner of the internet, although that probably needs to go too. But I'm talking about how much time, money, and energy you spend in the pursuit of multiple women. Now, I want you to notice two things before you click off this video. First of all, I said women. I'm talking about plural. I'm talking about spending a ton of time and money dating, hooking up, and chasing multiple women. The second thing that I want you to notice is that I said multiple women and I didn't say a wife. If one of your life goals is to be a real man and take responsibility for a wife and children, that's a whole different thing. In fact, some of the richest men in the world when they were surveyed said that one of the top things you need if you wanna be wealthy is you need a supportive spouse. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about serial dating and just hooking up and chasing women. And I know I'm pushing your buttons here and it might even sound impossible to you, but if you're really set on being successful and getting wealthy in a business, lend me your ears. I'm not just some old school parent here. I'm saying this just because I've witnessed too many men who have wasted their lives on flirting, on hooking up, dating, then breaking up, only to regret all that time and money that they could have focused in on their financial success. You need to focus on building up yourself first and then the right woman is gonna to come to you. Women appreciate men that have ambition, politeness, even a guy who can take the lead. And women are gonna lose interest in you if they look deeper and they realize that you lack the drive and ambition to really support them and to succeed financially. I know it's bitter truth, but like I said earlier, nobody else is probably gonna tell you this on YouTube. It's kind of like the analogy of a garden. If you spend your time making the perfect garden, if you spend your time chasing butterflies, they're all gonna fly away, right? But if you spend your time cultivating a beautiful garden, then the butterflies are gonna be attracted to you. All right, so if you've made it this far in the video, this shows that you do really have a commitment to your financial success. And this habit that I'm about to tell you might be even harder than the other ones, but it was one of the keys to my success in my online business. You see, back when I got started in the early 2000s in an online business, I had very little money coming in. But I needed time to build my online business. So what we did was we budgeted very carefully so we could actually live on what I could bring in from working only 20 hours per week. And then that left me the other 20 hours in the work week to spend building my online business even though it wasn't bringing in very much money at first. And eventually that online business grew to the point where it was supporting us all by itself. But the key here is that we had a careful plan for how we spent our money. Namely, we had a budget. And living without a budget is one of the key habits that you have to break if you ever want to reach financial success. If you don't have a plan for how you're gonna spend your money, then you're inevitably gonna spend it on things that don't move you forward towards your financial goals. Many people end up spending more than they earn and then they end up in all kinds of financial problems and debt. You might be nodding your head and thinking, yeah, that's me. It's time to tighten up that financial ship. If we had not had a plan and had a budget in place, I might have never broke out of that nine to five grind. I might have never had any kind of online business success. And it was during that extra 20 hours per week that I had to work on my online business where I discovered my Google Maps money system that has brought in millions of dollars for me and my students over the years. Better residual income, 
than anything else I've ever seen. Every client I get right now is worth at least a thousand dollars a year. I sold about six million last year. I'll right. sell about, about ten this year. My best month's been thirty-five k. Neighborhood of eight thousand dollars a month. So far for the year, I've done about sixty to seventy grand. We've made a little bit over two thousand dollars in less than about three weeks. And this same Google Maps income system makes me and my students money to this day. And you can actually learn and get a free class on how to do that system in the link in the description of this video. And I can really say that, that that system that you can get in that link, a lot of it is due to us being able to financially plan and budget where we spent our money all those years ago. Now you may be asking, how exactly do I do this? I want to recommend to you something called the 70-30 formula for building wealth. After you pay your taxes, the key is learning to live on 70% of your income. Now, in order to do this, you have to track your spending very carefully, but it's really easy nowadays. There's so many budgeting apps that can go right on your phone. They'll connect right with your bank account and they'll even automatically categorize all your spending for you. Then out of your income, you've got a remaining 30% and at 30% you split into three parts. One third you give away to charity. I'm talking about one third of the 30%. The other third you invest in stocks or maybe in, an, in a business. And then the remaining third you save. Now if you will do that plan, you're not gonna notice anything at first, but if you do this for five years, the difference of where you're gonna be at financially is gonna be amazing. You're gonna be ahead of the game and financially solid. Now we get to my last habit that you need to break if you ever wanna get rich. And I saved this one for last because it might be one of the most unpopular ones. But before I tell you what it is, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Do you fall asleep looking at your phone? Do you use your phone as an alarm? For example, the first thing that you see when you wake up, is it the light of the screen on your phone? And then between those times, how much time do you spend on screens every day? I'm going to tell you a secret. If you want to achieve financial success, you have to limit your screen time. And you're probably telling me, what does screen time have to do at all with becoming a millionaire or becoming rich? It has a lot to do with it, in fact. But first, let me tell you what I mean by screen time. What I mean by screen time is any time that you spend on any device, like a phone, a computer, a tablet, a TV, it could be texting, watching reels, it could be TikTok, it could be anything, but I'm talking specifically about non-work time. Obviously, if, if you have a job that involves looking at a screen, there's not much you can do about that. You have to do that for work. But I'm talking about outside of work. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be some killjoy and say you should never watch movies or never do anything fun on a screen. But I am saying you have to be very careful with it and limit how much time you're spending on it. In fact, some of my best and highest paying ideas that I've ever come up with, I came up with with just a pen and paper away from all the screens and that's when I came up with the best ideas. But most of the world actually does the opposite. Did you know that the average adult spends 11 hours of screen time every day? That's nearly half of the time that you're spending awake. And if you ask yourself how much of that actually contributes to me moving forward in my financial goals and how much of it is just wasted just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling wasting time and scrolling on feeds is actually for poor people and if you don't want to end up in that category limit your screen time there's even studies that show that if you look into a screen 30 minutes before bed it actually affects the quality of your sleep so just by doing a simple habit of turning your phone off 30 minutes to 60 minutes before you go to bed and waking up to an actual alarm clock, just that in itself could increase your productivity dramatically by giving you better sleep. And if you wake up to the alarm on your phone, sometimes, think about it, sometimes you'll be laying in bed and a bunch of time will be wasted. You'll be in bed scrolling already, looking at reels, looking at different social media, whatever, and before you know it, all that productive time has been sucked away and you haven't even gotten out of bed yet. If you can be strict with yourself and limit your time on screens outside of work to only maybe one hour or two hours, you're gonna see a dramatic difference in your mindset, in your ability to think clearly. And I encourage you to take that challenge and then come back to this video and leave me a comment if you were able to do it even just for seven days. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If I haven't made an enemy of you yet by giving you all this advice that you probably didn't want to hear, I really encourage you, click on the link in the description of this video. I have a free class, like I said. 
it, it goes through my Google Maps money system, how to make money using Google Maps. It's a powerful system. It takes a little bit of work to get it all set up, but once it's set up, it can generate income for you, residual income on autopilot. Again, you can get all the details on that by clicking in the link in the description of this video and registering for my free class.